Hey, Dave. Yo. I got a question for you. Okay. Are you into cosplay? Uh, I enjoy it. I don't do it. Corsetry, steampunk, gothic, or rockabilly clothing, wow. shoes, and accessories? I greatly enjoy when Phoebe wears these things. Well, then you know what you and Phoebe should do? You should visit Subculture Corsets and Clothing, either online at www.subculturecorsets.com or drop by their store at the Avenues Mall in Jacksonville, Florida. Tell them you heard their ad on Project I Radio. Fuck that. Tell them you're Dave from The Hard Show with Brian Keene on Project I Radio. And you and Phoebe will, will receive a 10% discount off your entire purchase. Sounds awesome. You, or, you know what, if you guys aren't going to go to Florida, you can go to their website. Again, that's subculturecourses.com and use the discount code The Hard Show with Brian Keene. And you'll receive a 10% discount on your entire order. And you know what, Dave? What's that? If you are a full-figured gal, and you are a full-figured gal. <laughs> that certainly yes. Don't worry, because subculture carries sizes 4 through 4X. And men's clothing as well. So if you ever want to dress up in men's clothing, there you go. <laughs> That's subculturecorsets.com. And use the discount code, The Horror Show with Brian Keene, for a 10% discount. No comment! Sir, what about the ending to The Rising? Mother f What part of no comment don't you understand? Do you understand this? This interview is over! No comment! The f Brian Keene was also unavailable for comment. Welcome back to The Horror Show. I'm your host, Dave Thomas. Uh, Brian is not here this week because he's out doing his book tour. Remember, if you need to see if Brian's going to be in your area, you can go to his website, briankeen.com, look at the appearance tab, and it'll show you all places he's signing books uh, on his tour right now for uh, The Complex and Pressure. Uh, so today's show is going to be a little bit different. It's a book club episode, and I would need to introduce our participants. First is a man responsible for movies like The Stall, and the upcoming I'm Dreaming of White's Doomsday, we of course are talking about Mike Lombardo. Hi everybody, <laughs> I'm Mike. Yes. How are you? <laughs> and our other participant is very familiar with horror because she's been my girlfriend for almost the last five years. It's Phoebe. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> yes. So, each of them assigned the other one a book to read, and today they're going to discuss their books. Uh, Mike, what book did you read? Um, I read... Infinite Jest. Um, <laughs> wait. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Or uh, it's, uh, it's alternate title, Rough and Ready by Sandra Hill. Okay. And uh, Phoebe, what was your novel sh of choice that wasn't your choice? Family Tradition by Edward Lee and John Palin. I think it's Palin, but... Palin? Close enough. That's okay. Yes. Like skin. Palin. Yeah. No, that's yeah. probably yeah. it, too, <laughs> based on this book. This so, before we get to their uh, books, do, we do have an advertiser this week. Uh... Today's show is being brought to you by the new novel, <coughs> Haunted Gunslinger, by uh, Chuck Buddha. James Johnson, the illegitimate son of the legendary Wyatt Earp, moves to Wichita, Kansas for a fresh start. He brings his mother and his mentally disabled friend, Carson, with him. But fresh starts bring new problems. Each year on the same date, a gunslinger ghost shoots up Main Street at high noon. The apparition repay replays its last moments alive. The townsfolk believe the legendary spirit to be a residual haunt until the gunslinger finds a way to finally win a shootout. Can James and Carson defeat the haunted gunslinger before more innocents die, or will the devil win the West? Haunted Gunslinger is the second installment in the Son of Earp series. The supernatural horror continues. Haunted Gunslinger is available in paperback and ebook formats exclusively from Amazon, or free through the Amazon Kindle Unlimited program. And we thank you for your sponsorship today. So uh, we're going to start with Mike's book. 
So, uh, take it away, Mr. Romance. Um, okay, so Rough and Ready by Sandra Hill. Um, I'd like to start off with a little bit of backstory. Because I didn't this. pick this from him. This was his choice. Yeah, this, this, was, this was my own doing. Uh, this joke has been... This is, a, this is the culmination of an inside joke that's been going on for 13 years. Um, I say that. I should probably check the publication date on this to make sure I'm not lying. Because I'm pretty sure... It's pretty... First, yeah, it was about 11, 11 years. Yeah. Um, so I was at a buddy of mine's house. Uh, we call him Milano, a uh, star of stage and screen. He's in a lot of the old Roll Splatter movies. Um, he was living with his mother at the time when we were in high school. And uh, she was a big fan of the Harlequin romance novels, uh, which for the viewers out there, by viewers I mean listeners out there who are not familiar with it, they published like trashy housewife erotica. Um, the stuff that has Fabio on the cover, that's like the kind of shit they publish. So she was really big into that. And one day I walked into his house to see Rough and Ready by Sandra Hill sitting on the table, the coffee table. He's got a shirtless uh, buff hunk holding a gun walking up a beach. And I'm like, oh, what's this? I did not notice the Viking longship in the background. <laughs> um, so I pick it up uh, while I'm waiting for him to get out of the bathroom. And he actually came out to see me because I was laughing so hard. He thought, he was like, what the fuck is happening in my house? <laughs> so I'm just going to read the back of this to everybody. Um, so you can get an idea of what I experienced. From national best-selling author Sandra Hill comes the thrilling tale of a rough-and-ready Navy SEAL who embarks on the most dangerous voyage of his life through time. A mission of no mercy. It takes nothing short of a miracle to catapult Lieutenant Torolf Magnusson and his team of Navy SEALs back in time to the 11th century Norselands. First on the agenda, destroy the evil villain who terrorized his family and a nation. A surrender so sweet. But when the sexy seals find they've landed in the middle of a sanctuary filled with women, well, hoo their plans are put on hold, <laughs> much to the distress of Hilda, the head of the sanctuary. At first resistant to Torloff's pursuits, she soon succumbs to his passionate advances. Suddenly the term special forces takes on a whole new meaning. But with victory in sight for Torloff, Hilda must face the fact that their love may not survive the test of time. So I was in tears reading this, because this is literally a book about time-traveling Navy SEALs banging Vikings. Yeah, um, but, but can we talk about, he's, he's from the past already. Yes, he actually, yeah, so he, well, we'll get into the plot of okay, this. Okay, sorry, there is a um, plot. But so, we saw this book, and I made so much fucking fun of plot over this book. <laughs> For 10, for 11, 11 years, uh, it was a joke, and I was like, I'm going to track that fucking book down, I'm going to read it, and I was going to, I told him that at his wedding, I was going to read passages from it to embarrass him, which, you know, I probably still will do one day. Um, <laughs> so, I was at Brian's house, and we were, we, we were was it 4th of July that this happened, or something, was it before we that? Were, it was last year, some, it was I, a while ago. We was actually. a while ago, and... You said about the thing, and I giggled because I said I probably have that book. That's right. And Phoebe I was kind of embarrassed because he was making fun of it because, <laughs> you know, that's what you read when you don't really want to think about anything, you know? Well, I mean, Phoebe, you know, I'm not, I was, I made sure I told her when, when she was talking about, like, I'm not judging. Everyone DJs to their own beat, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Uh, time traveling maybe seals you a thing. That's totally okay. Uh, not so much, but, it, you know, I have the book. There's a series of them. <laughs> As, and I want to ask you about that, because I did not get a chance to research any more of uh, the series. But So you, you had the book and said, Randomly, oh I my was, God, I, I couldn't this. believe it. And I, I was like, that. no one had ever heard of this book before. I bring this story up all the time, because I'm an asshole. And, um, <laughs> and <laughs> it's like, I have this, and I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> and then I forget whose idea it was. Someone said you should read that, and you should read a book of my choosing, and we and should. Then, there we go, and here it. we are. And yeah, and I just started cackling maniacally, and I said family tradition immediately, and you said that doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> and Brian comes out, he's like, "What did you just say?" I said family <laughs> tradition. He's like, "Oh God." Well, from what I understand, I got off easy by reading family tradition, <laughs> as opposed to the other options by Edward Lee, who seems to be a genuinely very cool, laid back dude. Oh, he's a sweetheart. But this is nothing like Rough and Ready. <laughs> Actually, the two have some remarkable similarities, which is really interesting. I was very surprised. Um, oh, boy. So that yeah, so that's the story of how this came to be. So, of course, I called uh, Milano and informed him that I would be reading Rough and Ready. Actually, no. 
I don't lying. I didn't call him. I texted him a picture of this and said, <laughs> and so it begins. And I believe the text back was, fuck you, I hate you. <laughs> well, he has to listen to this podcast. Yeah, I hope so. That Send would make, that would make, well, there's you, me, three. So that would be four viewers that will be listening to this one. Um, so that's an improvement from the other episodes that Brian is on. Um, <laughs> hold for laughs. <laughs> I love you, Brian. Thank you for the thing thing you got me. <laughs> yes, it's a very nice thing thing. It is. It's a makeup uh, brush and solvent adhesive holder sculpted by Rob Bottin that looks that's like got the creature from the thing on it. He got it from his store for me because he's a sweetheart and I love him. Rob Bottin, I mean, I hate Keen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's not here and you just going to bash him. <laughs> um... But anyway, so uh, so what format would you like us to do this in, Dave? Um, um, go ahead and talk about uh, your, your book first. You so can just discuss it. Okay, mm-hmm. so just feel free to chime in wherever. Yeah, I, did. Um, I actually reread it in preparation for this. I wish I, I it's seven ninety nine to load it on my yeah. phone. Oh, I wish I could say I envy you, but. <laughs> um, so rough and ready. Uh, this we we assigned each other these books. So you gave me this probably four or five months ago. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, it's a while ago. Yeah. I just finished it two days ago. You've been, <laughs> you've been busy. Yeah, that's why. No, um, that's not why. It took me three weeks to read the first 60 pages of this book. Can I just say, the feedback that I saw posted on Facebook was you were having a harder time reading the romance novel than I had reading Family Tradition. <laughs> yes. Which I think is incredibly I thought that was pretty intriguing. funny. Um, but the thing is, the first 60 pages of this book... Uh, <sighs> Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to be as critical as I would a normal novel. But let's say the the term "well written" I would not apply to this. Um, although, although I will say, in in the long run, this was a lot better than I expected it to be. It did pick up after the first sixty pages. It became a novel. Like there was actually a plot and a story, yeah. which was really surprising. And I kind of got into it a little bit. And you sort of root for the. Yeah, I started, I'm like, I actually kind of like this, this is fun. And yeah. then it just kind of, you know... Then well, it turned back to what it really Yeah, is. it turned into... Well, for being a housewife erotica novel, it really doesn't have that much erotica at all. No. There's only maybe a half dozen sex scenes in the whole thing. And they're not even... They can't compare to what I got to read. <laughs> well, they're not, they're not Edward Lee sex yeah. scenes, but... Um, they so so the plot of this book, this guy, it, it just opens with a prologue about this... The main character, Tor, Tor- Rol- Rolf... I think it's his name. But don't they call him Max or something? Yeah, they else? call him Max. Let's call him Max. This yeah. is easier. Um, so Max apparently is pre is a time traveling Viking. He yes. actually traveled from the past to the future yeah. and became a, a Navy SEAL. Yeah. At some point, I yeah. was unaware. I'm not sure what number of the series this I book is. I think this is. is eight. Believe it or not, I've read some of these. I have to say, time travel Vikings are not my first choice. I prefer a it, Highlander. Yeah. Scottish. It kilted. is a niche market, admittedly, the time traveling Navy SEAL. I like time travel, but I'm very particular about my time periods. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, <laughs> yeah, this is like a. Or the seal. monthly flow, as they constantly refer to in this book. Um, <laughs> cause they, this it, is is a, a, it is a period piece, I have yeah, to say. There's um, a lot of. There's, we're not going to knock Sandra Hill. She's doing very well. Oh, she has more money, I'm sure, from this yeah. one book than I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, I hope that's not true, but. <laughs> For now, it is. But yeah, there's a bunch of them. It doesn't. I thought it said somewhere. I don't see. I don't know. That I it's think really it's number related. eight. I mean, I jumped right into this, and yeah. I, I had no trouble following the plot. I didn't think um, you needed a whole lot of. Um... But the, the plot is the setup is this time traveling Viking Max. His sister um, mm-hmm. finds a book, a history book talking about this evil, the scourge of of the Norselands. I believe his name is Stein Stein, Stein Steinloff. Steingard. Stein. Stein, some some generic uh, Viking Norwegian name. Sounding name. Um, so he's a bad guy, and they constantly say that he is the Hitler of of the Viking era. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And uh, they do that a lot. Yeah, he's a. They, they, the term gets used quite a bit. Um, like. Mm-hmm. So he they they still like you know we should go back in time and stop this guy from from subjugating our family and doing all these terrible things and he says because didn't he do horrible things to his sister he, he did, did he did which he, is in another book yeah oh there's more about that sp- previously oh there's a prequel. see because the family here's like the story something happens they're trying to get away from this bad guy uh-huh. so they get on the longboat mm-hmm. and there's a storm oh, and all of a sudden they end up in California that's in the right. modern times that's so that's right. the pre story okay. That. So. so they decide I'm going to go back in time. So little this is this is literally a page of explanation. The next page, 
it's just this Navy SEAL talking to his sexy cohorts. Um, yeah. Jam, Geek, Pretty Boy. Um, I can't even remember the other name. Cajun. Who's... Oh, the Cajun guy who constantly quotes bad vernacular Cajuns. Actually, a lot like Family Traditions. <laughs> yeah. like family Traditions there, fun. there are a lot of similarities. Um, he's always telling his, his delightful Cajun sayings from his, 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 his mom map or yeah. something. Whatever the hell they, they term they use. So they're like, they say to him, so you're gonna, what are you doing? He's like, I've got to go away for a couple weeks. And they're like, where? He's like, through time. And of course, they all laugh. And then a paragraph later, they're like, well, we're going to travel in time with you. Yeah. And like, there's, there's very little questioning of any of this stuff. But this, this passage, I thought was particularly powerful. Um, <laughs> you know you go on bonkers, don't you? Cage regarded with amusement. He probably expected him to say something like, gotcha, and admit he'd been joking. I wish, maybe but I've got to try. That's my max voice. Okay. You, honest to God, believe in time travel, pretty boy wanted to know. Well, no, but I do believe in miracles. Like time travel, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? This is little, like, random asides that, I mean, that's not really that bad, I guess, but there's just, it's complete nonsense. But literally after that paragraph, they're just like, okay. sure, so they just go to the Norselands and they're like on a tour boat. Yep. I should say right now, spoiler alert massively for both of these books. Yeah, we're going to talk, talk about, about what happened. Them. So so if you haven't read the books and you'd like to follow along, please read them and then do this. Um, so then they, they just go, they go to like a Viking tour boat thing and they're like, damn it, we're not time traveling at all. And then they're all talking about how they're going to go slay some of the local ladies because that's all they talk about because they're Navy yeah, SEALs. Yeah. And um, then apparently there is... Uh, Something happens. Like a yeah, there's, there's a storm of some kind, or they just out of the blue. Because yeah. this goes on for chapters where there's nothing happening. Yeah, it's they're like, just like hanging out. I oh, can't that guy travel. looks like somebody I know. And oh, this reminds me of being back in time. But meanwhile, yeah. there's like tourists in flip flops. Yeah, and there's nothing going on. And then all of a sudden, they just get knocked about on this yeah. boat. And there's people screaming, and everyone is, I guess, dying, actually, because the whole boat like disintegrates. And there's people getting like hit with the, the mast. And it just gets like super. Like, graphically chaotic for out of nowhere. And then this is another one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite lines. Um, there was a loud crashing noise and everyone standing was thrown off their feet by the impact. He glanced up from his prone position as if in slow motion he felt the longboat teeter from side to side in its now dry dock state, then tip over. Before he could react to that catastrophe, something even worse happened. The heavy yardum, or yardarm, and mast came crashing down over them. Under the massy, massive heavy sails, he heard screams, cracking wood, cursing, more screams, piercing pain in his head and shoulders, and then silence. So this is how it ends, he thought. In death. <laughs> now, yeah, this, what he's talking about in that moment is, he's, this, the previous paragraph, he's lamenting the fact that he is going to die on a, on a, a, a tour boat. So it's not, this is how my adventure in time travel ends, this is how my death ends, in death. <laughs> I was like, this... Um, okay. I don't think I've ever given this much thought to these books. Oh, I'm being nice. I know I, you are. I, I, know I, had, you are. I had pages of stuff written down. Um, but then, so, so they go back in time, and they, they end up being assaulted by a group of wild women who uh, run a sanctuary, and they're described as savage women. They're all these Viking ladies that are escaping this evil guy, Stern... Stern we'll, just call him, we'll just call him Viking Hitler. Yes, good Viking one. Hitler. So work. Viking Hitler, apparently... Um, I wish I would have bookmarked those pages, because that's when I started... That's about maybe that's... 100 pages in. I wish I would have bookmarked those pages, because that's when I started to get into the book, because it, it, it goes from them the old silly, badly written... You know, time travel nonsense, and then suddenly it cuts to um, a young girl who's battered and bruised being taken into the sanctuary who had her tongue cut out because she refused to give oral sex to a Viking yeah. by, by Viking Hitler. And then the main character, the girl Hilda, is saying, Don't worry, honey, Viking Hitler gave my father the Blood Eagle, which the book then goes then on I to Then I was describe. like, this is Lombardo's kind of book. Yeah, for those of you who don't know what the Blood Eagle is, it was a Viking uh, execution torture where they lay you on your stomach they pin your arms down and they uh, they they cut your your rib cage from the back on either side of the spine and pull your lungs out of your body and have them flopped over uh, your exposed rib cage so it just bakes out in the sun and you asphyxiate uh -huh. from that and birds peck your lungs out so you look like a bl like bloody wings so we're talking about that and then the other woman's talking about how 
she watched her entire family get raped and decapitated and like yeah. all this stuff. I'm like, whoa. It's horrible. Like, what the fuck? What is this? Yeah. So I was looking at Sandra Hill in a whole different light. I'm like, damn, girl. <laughs> you got some you got a, a mean streak in you a mile long. Yeah. So there's some really graphic violence. Uh, I mean, it doesn't go like super in detail, but I mean, much like the episode of MacGyver where someone gets the Colombian necktie, which is where they cut your throat and pull your tongue out through your neck so it sticks out. I was like, holy shit. I <laughs> like, do not remember that from yeah. MacGyver. I was holy like, this crap. is MacGyver. Like, holy fuck, right? But they did it with like a tampon and a screwdriver or something. <laughs> I don't know if you could get from the Colombian necktie of the tampon, but, but I don't know. It would know. certainly help clean up afterwards, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> You know, I don't know. It's MacGyver. <laughs> he used weird shit. Sorry. <laughs> um, there's, there's a story in that. The tampon screwed out of MacGyver Columbia that time. Um, Marta's next film. <laughs> so, mine coming to you soon. So the, so Viking Hitler is apparently up to no good, you know, yeah. causing trouble in the neighborhood. And uh, the, so the Viking, the Navy SEALs are all time travel, and they get captured by the Viking women, who um, I was really curious about these time travel stories because... I always wonder when there's time traveling romance novels, which apparently is a very there's, big oh, subgenre, yes. huge subgenre, as I discovered. All kinds of time travel. Um, the problem with, with going back in time to the Viking era, because, you know, the back of this book makes it sound like it's going to be real sexy, like, oh man, a women's sanctuary, holy shit. Women back in the Norse ages, uh, so they, they, were, they were really very clean. Um, especially these ladies who are working, they, they live in the woods, like in this rundown, like ramshackle old fort. And they are, like, farmers and stuff. So I'm like, how are they going to explain this? Because the, the big one was, like, pirate stuff, right? Like, the, the porn pirates, which is actually delightful. Because it's, like it's like Pirates of the Caribbean with sex in it. it was one, they, had, they actually had CGI skeleton fights. Highly recommend it. Um, <laughs> okay. But it's, uh, it's, like, you know, pirates are probably the least attractive group of people that you could ever imagine. Like, they were at sea for months on end. Their teeth were rotted out. They were really gross and dirty and hairy and nasty and all sorts of bad stuff. Vikings, pretty damn similar. Um, so I was really curious as to how Sandra Hill was going to tackle this. Well, the introduction of these girls, the, the main characters said that he could see the sheep shit in their hair. And I was like, oh, they're actually doing it. And they actually were dirty, smelly, gross-looking women. I was like, well, this is a, a yeah, but twist. He thought, but he thought she was cute still. Well, Even though she had poop in her hair. I mean, I, I'll, I'll admit... You know, I've been on more than one first date and, and noticed feces in someone's hair. It's not a deal breaker necessarily, but, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, I mean, that's something, it's funny because sometimes they do talk about the time travel and the reality of it, and sometimes they just gloss over it. Well, that's the thing. is There's a lot of glossed over stuff in this book, which is, I just was surprised that if they're trying to arouse me, that their introduction to their... Women is uh, their Yeah, that their women is that they're literally covered in sheep feces. I'm like, huh, Okay. Um, well, that's so, a whole specific but, audience right there. Yeah, well, see, I mean, I know. I mean, yeah. I know that this book was huge in Germany. Yeah. Um, oh my god! <laughs> well, they do have, but they do have like a bathhouse. Well, yes, yeah, so they do. They, they yeah. do. Eventually, what happens is um, because these these ladies are are very gross. They're also uh, incredibly uh, horny, as, yeah. as you find out. Yeah. So as soon as they find that there's men there, they hatch a plan as to how they're going to blindfold, restrain, and rape all of the men. So then they can become sick with child. And, uh... Yes, but it, she says it much nicer than that. Not not especially nicer than that. They literally say they're going to tie them up and blindfold them and then just gang rape them. And they're all, there's two factions of the women. One that group is arguing against doing this. The other one's like, no, we should totally do it. We want that because they, they want children. Yeah, they say, well, there's only six guys and there's like... 15 of us. Oh, then, no, there's more than that. It's like or, 20... I don't know. It ends up having to do it like... Took three weeks for everybody to get done once, and then they would start all over again if anybody wasn't pregnant. Did they do that in this book? Though I don't, think I don't they, know if they actually no, do no, that. No, that no, was their talk. Yeah, so there's a lot of there's a lot of there's like the the ratio of man to woman is like is like fifteen to one. Let's just say. Oh that. yeah, that's fair. And I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure exactly. I'm not history buffs. So I don't know exactly what time period they're in, but I don't think that um, Bang Boss was around yet, so they didn't quite know that it's very possible to to do these things um, without. You know the the specifics that they go into, um, but anyways, these six these six Navy SEALs are like, oh, you don't have to tie us up, and then there's Q, a whole hilarious I um, use that air quotes, um, where they teach these Viking women all about um, cunning tingles, yes. which uh, is also known as cunnilingus and all this stuff, which again covered in sheep shit, literally covered in animal feces. They and, took a and, bath first. 
worse. But there's but then they're talking about all that and how the women then dressed nicer and uh, yeah, you know, they were cut men. their cut their hair and did all this stuff. Um, so the main character and the and Hilda, they sparks do not fly immediately. He doesn't. They don't like each other at they all. They knew each other when they were younger. They knew each other when they were younger. They were uh, they were it's classic classic story of Viking meets rape victim um, Stockholm I don't think syndrome. She was, raped, though. she was. In this, she says it's it, Stein it Steinloff, whatever did it, and he then did it? yeah, she okay. also killed all three of her husbands. She didn't the old necessarily th- kill all of them. At least one of them. Hildy, Hildy's not necessarily the best person in the world, but anyways, so they go on with this where they're you know the the usual like teasing each other, and he's like, yep. she's like, I don't like. She calls him the lout constantly. Yeah, like yeah. they use the word lout more times than pecker snot gets used in family tradition, and that's um. impressive. Um, <laughs> the look on your face right Ugh. there was, was wonderful. Ugh. Um, snot. Ugh. So they, she hates the lout, and uh, you know it's the the classic. Oh, I'm so fed up with you, but I can't help but fall for you until he just consistently rapes her. In this story. Okay, this is not... Wait, 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 wait. This is <laughs> okay, no, okay, no, wait a He, minute. on more than one occasion, literally restrains her and forces himself on her while she's screaming, no, don't do this. But... She likes see, it. Well, you see in her, in her internal monologue, don't stop, okay? But... From his point of view, it's still rape. He doesn't know that she likes it. See, <laughs> like, it's, it's I, bad. See, I think that's interesting because I didn't get that from that. Do you have fantasies of being taken by a time no! traveling Viking? No, not I mean, at all. I do, but that's, that's, that's a whole other podcast. No, because I, I just she was she wanted to, but she didn't. This is a classic romance thing. I like you, I hate you. Come fuck me. No, don't. No, I, I know, I get that all the time, but it usually lands me in court. <laughs> in this age, modern age of of good consent, I feel like this I think, is see, but I a think gray he, area. I think seduced her and i think she was willing i should okay, not no, every no, okay i could argue okay. that for a couple of them but yeah. some of these he legitimately at one point um so we're gonna hop ahead a little bit here yeah. uh like halfway through the book they kill this this viking hitler guy and they're all trapped in the past now she actually but gets to kill him she kills him and then it's like this huge epic battle scene where they're decapitating people and gutting yeah. them and i'm like man i i read that start that part of the story one-handed yeah. Unlike oh. the rest of the book, which I read one-handed. Um, oh, and, you didn't like it that much. I know you Well, no, I used my left hand. It was a oh, consolation prize. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so they're, like, gutting people and all this crap, and it's, you know. Um, but the, the, uh, they end up traveling forward in time again, and then there's a random subplot that gets dropped after two pages where Hilda is blind for some reason. I found the and, time travel, I guess. Well, she gets, like, cracked on the head with, like, a mudslide or something. Oh, yeah, then, yeah, they get buried in a mudslide. That's yeah, how they, they get buried in a mudslide, because somehow that equals time travel. Because the book's like, well, I ran out of ideas on <laughs> things, on modern colloquialisms that won't work in Viking times, so we need to do something else. So oh, mudslide! They travel back in time, or forward in time this time. Oh, the other oh. great thing is, I wish I had, I had this bookmarked and I can't find it again. Um... When they the Viking people meet these Navy SEALs, they start talking, and they actually have a line. I was curious about this. I'm like, how are they going to handle, like, the whole time, or the... Like, how they understand yeah, each other? Yeah, how they understand each other. And it literally says, it like, talks about it. wait a minute, are you speaking English? And they go, hmm, well, if time travel exists, I guess language barriers don't exist. That's yeah. a line. That is a fucking yeah. line. I was like, wow. Good job, Sandra Hill. You had a whole checklist of things that you knew... That somebody was going to say something about, so she just glosses over it entirely. But it, it's true, though. They do say something. Wait a minute, I can understand them, and they can understand me. But I'm talking English, and they're talking whatever. But... Anglo or Saxon or Saxon whatever. Saxon, whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah. And yeah. It's, it's like I'm like, are you kidding? They're just going to completely gloss over that, except for all the random like slang phrases and stuff yeah. that they say. Then, then that can be the subject of hilarious jokes, or they just instantly understand all of it. and It doesn't make any damn sense. Um, so then they they go forward in time again, and then there's like a series of subplots that don't that really go nowhere. Where there is she's in the hospital, and they determine that her blood type is an alien. Uh, so then there's randomly these okay, like yeah. men in black guys that are trying to abduct her to take to her die, to, to what, dissect what did she her. Call it, though? Oh, it's it's called uh, yeah. The, her hilarious misinterpretation of the word dissect is like, it's like is like. Die sign, I don't know, it's something... It's something really stupid. Yeah, um, so she's going to get abducted by people, because I think she's an alien, and they want to dissect her. Yep. And then they keep saying, we're going to dissect her. 
while she's still alive. And it's like it's called vivisection for the record, but you know, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Science. Is why they why priority. they would need to dissect her to prove that she's I have no idea what the hell sense they're making, but um Well, they were pretty weird. Yeah, well this anyway. is like this is like a nine-page subplot and then he like breaks her out of the hospital. And then they're they're staying in Holly Heaven, which is a trailer park full of bikers. Yeah. For some, it's just jumping between romance novel tropes. Um, yeah, we're kind of covering everybody. Yeah. There. So they go to the they go to Holly Heaven, and then she's like staying in this place, and then she decides to start another sanctuary for women who have been beaten by their biker daddies. Well, because there was this one, the one of the neighbors was abused. Yeah, and that's okay. I will say one of the things that I was actually kind of impressed about in this book is the character of Hilda who runs the sanctuary, it's specifically for women who have been brutalized and raped and stuff by this by Viking Hitler. And they actually go into a pretty... Uh, it's actually a pretty neat subplot. Like, the, the, the depth that they get out of the character of Hilda, it's actually kind of heartwarming. Like, yeah. they really... For all the, the gray area sexcapades that go on in here, this book really does come out with a very strong anti-abuse yeah. uh, message. But it doesn't feel forced. Like the, that, yeah. that's the one part of this book that it seems like they really, it was like genuine. That they genuinely was yeah. actually really researched, and I was it's one of the things that made me like this book because there actually, you know, at points there really was a plot, and I was like, you know what, I legitimately feel something for these characters. Like they've been, you know, they've, the, yeah. the worst thing that could possibly happen to them has happened to them, and then there's this character who is taking them in and basically saying, "You should not be judged for this," because in that right. society, as they say, you know. That if you're, you know, raped or treated like a sex object, then you're not worth anything. And a lot of that stuff holds true today, which yeah. is, I think, why it's in there. But it was just, a, it was it was a lot darker and a lot more... Uh, less frivolous than you Yeah, thought. less frivolous than I was expecting. So, I mean, I will give that in its point. So, she decides to start a new sanctuary out of this, like, trailer park thing. And there's some genuine moments in there, too, where they, they get the one... As Hilda hilariously says, we should just go kill the lout that beat you. And yep. They said we do things differently nowadays. Everyone has to have due process of the law. So they get the guy arrested, they get a restraining order and all that stuff, and then she falls in love with one of the other Viking or Navy SEALs. I was like, okay, it's actually kind of nice. I'm like, okay, this is good. Um, so, But then we cut immediately to Torloff, or Max, literally picking her up against her will. She's screaming, stay the hell away from me, I don't want you to touch me. And he ties her to a shower head. This is after she was abducted by these crazy alien people and he rescues her. Right. He they're... ties her to a shower head. She's screaming, let me go, and kicking him. He blindfolds her and then paints her body with chocolate and starts licking it off but of she... her. Which, no. at, at which point she is still fighting him. And then finally she just lets it happen and he bangs her. And she liked it. I, wait, I'm coming off on a bad side of this, aren't I? That's you not, really are. That's terrible. That's terrible. I am sorry. That's it's, not... Because, you know... But see, okay, I didn't perceive it that way. Well, because it's a romance novel. It's not supposed to be perceived. It's supposed to be like, ooh, I'm getting a little uh, hot under the collar here. But if you adapt this to modern law, like, he's raping her. It's very bad. It's very, very well, what's bad. What's interesting, too, is that book, like you said, what, 11 years old? Yeah. That's how much our society has changed in 11 years. Yeah. Like... I would think they'd have a hard time publishing that now. Yeah. I really do. It's, it's, because there's a lot of, there's legitimately a lot of, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a it's, super, you know, uptight, uh, uh, social justice. Yeah, social right. justice PC guy, but I mean, like, I was reading this and I'm like, because Fifty Shades of Grey is the same deal. It's like, right. this is kind of rapey. Like, well, 50 you know, Shades, there's, yeah. there's one, there's, you know, it's one thing to be aggressively sexual and be in a, a BDSM type relationship and that kind of stuff and, you know, where, you know, there's and yeah, some people have yeah. Well, and some stuff. people have have well, you know rape fantasies and, and all that. And I mean, I've, yeah. I've 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 dealt with that sort of thing before. It's not my thing, but you know, I've I've role played when asked, and that's a little bit different. This is literally if I pick someone up and they started punching me and said, "Don't touch me," and I tied them up and fucked them, I'm going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that's not okay. Exactly. That's bad. Yeah. Okay. Um. So there, there was that, but there's that subplot with the alien thing. Um, that that he was gets, out of nowhere. Yeah, completely out of nowhere. She gets abducted by these people, and then the Navy SEALs just bust into like a Motel 6 where they're at, and they're going to try to impregnate her, because then there's another subplot where she's pregnant out of nowhere. That oh yeah, like, they were like all excited. Oh, you're pregnant, even though they constantly refer to the cone dams right. that they're always using that is supposed to increase their virility, because you know, it's a time travel story, it's hilarious that they don't understand so despite the fact that he, if, my, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure 
that... I don't. I'm, I have to go back through and read these sex scenes, but I don't know how exactly she would have gotten pregnant. Well, I don't know that, failed. No, but I don't think that he didn't. He always like pull out and stuff, wasn't there? Because there was like I, a few bits of graphic stuff that were in there. I seem to I, recall. I think he did at some times, but I don't. I'm, think I'm, he always I mean, did. I'm fairly certain that this, the majority of this, was oral sex in this book because it's she always. She really liked it. Yeah, the cunning, the cunning tingles in her lady yeah. parts. Because um, she didn't know, she didn't know sex could be fun and enjoyable because yeah. her husbands were loud. Which, okay, and that's another thing I will say about this book, too. Again, it, it, aside from all the bizarre rape, there actually was a really pro-sex message in here, too, because... Yeah. All, she, from all the guys. Yeah, she she talks about a lot of the characters about how these, these Viking women, sex was just for procreation and the pleasure of their husband, but these guys really go out of their way to try to... To say hey. Show, like, hey, you know, you deserve to have to be pleasured, too, and we can teach you that it's okay to masturbate and all this kind of stuff, which is, again, more just trashy erotica stuff, but... The way it was portrayed, it actually was genuinely nice. Like, Hilda learns to accept her body and because she's small-breasted body. and she's constantly like, oh, no man would ever want me. And they're like, no, it's okay to have different body types. People and there's a man. larger woman in here, the one Navy SEAL is he like, just, I he, love this, love this girl. It. it was actually refreshing to read this stuff. And I'm like, okay, good for so you, were, Sandra they, Hill. They, I mean, they were, I think maybe, maybe I'm a little happy-go-lucky compared to Lombardo. Um, we clearly have different ideas of it's okay to rape someone. Well, no, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. Now, see, I'm pulling it up on my phone and looking to see what. The, I <laughs> what feel the, bad. What I the, am not pro rape. What is the legal definition? That is the quote of the episode, ladies and gentlemen. The oh. screen, I am not pro rape. I am not. <laughs> oh my gosh. See, now I feel bad. <laughs> So how does this end? Okay, so, um, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> the like, alien, yeah. so they bust into the Motel 6 where the alien abduction guys are going to rape her and impregnate her for some reason. I'm not sure exactly what the aim of that well, is. Well, he, no, I think he was just a pervert and he just wanted to have sex with her. I guess. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so, they bust in and just shoot, they blow off the hands of the alien guys. Like, they literally shoot the weapons out of their hands. Yeah, the line is, I believe... They were severely injured clutching the stumps that were previously holding their weapons, but not dead. So they made sure I know that they wouldn't die from it. They were just hideously maimed by the main characters. And then that's it. Then the subplot's completely dropped. Then he rapes her again. (laughs) It's like, okay, sure. And then you're like, okay, well, that subplot was unnecessary. What's going to happen now? Then it continues further, where they, uh, they go to... They decide she's going to stay in the future... Um, and I don't start think she a new, had a choice, a new sign. Well, but we didn't think she had a choice previously, but as Dusex Sandra Hill decided to, uh, you know, I got tired of writing this stuff, so now they're in the future now, where they can well, there's constantly, an, there's another book. where they can constantly say, what are these, these, these horseless carriages? Oh, and the people, the little people in the box. Yeah, the, little, the little people, people in, the in the box. box and the the she talks about television, and that's all hilarious. So it's very, very charming fish out of water stuff mixed with copious amounts of rape. Um, and then, uh, but there, there is, I, the, so the sex scenes in this book, I should talk about those. They were not nearly as graphic as I expected to, for something like this. Like, they were, they were more graphic than you would expect in, like, an R-rated movie and stuff. But, again, the sex-positive message in the moments that he wasn't taking her against her will were actually kind of genuine and very sweet. He's always very nice and, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, he's always... Taking care of her needs. Taking care of her needs first, um... So, but then there was, there was this, I just, I had, I love this. This was great. I had this bookmarked. She had begun to match his thrusts, now hard and short with her own undulating hips. Either I'm a good teacher or she's a good student, or I'm nuts for trying to figure anything out when I'm in this condition. Then she spread her legs wider so we could go in farther, and his eyes about rolled in, back into his head from the sheer ecstasy. He was out of control. She was out of control. He ground out his mind-blowing release. She arced her belly up against his and refused to let his cock go as she convulsed around him, pumping every drop from... Oh, there we there go! That's how she got There's pregnant! The, we, ladies I and gentlemen, you. page 132, <laughs> The Inseminator. <laughs> now, are you ready for this? This is why I wanted to give some preamble for this. He was in dick heaven. <laughs> that is that why. Is terrible. He was in dick heaven. Okay, that needs to be undercover. Now, you'll, you'll be in dick heaven. <laughs> Or that needs to be a new series of no, books, Dick Heaven. No, <laughs> I, I wrote a, a, erotic, a horror erotica story um, for an anthology in Strange Sex, called Strange Sex 3. On uh, my story, just like the real thing, there was a line where a guy is buying a homemade sex toy from a man in a parking lot of the porn store, and he says, 
it feel it'll feel like your cock going to Disneyland. <laughs> no. That's right up there. With and that was a real that was a real quote from somebody who told me this. They said <laughs> it was like their their cock going to Disneyland. So I was really impressed with this particular line. So this was good. Um, but the final thing I have bookmarked before we go any further about how it ends. Um, this book is 315 pages long. Yeah. So this is 315 pages. We're we're with these six Navy SEALs and their sexcapades and adventures. On page 292, we discover this about one of our characters. Oh, great. I don't see one black person here. I hate it when I'm the token homeboy. This was Sly, who was African American. He, he just. Why? I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what? Well, he didn't, you didn't time travel. You didn't feel. No, he was. He was no, no, no. This is the, that's when they're at the military ball. Sly, Sly was in a lot of this book. They talk about him constantly. Sly, I think. I thought Sly. He, wait a minute. He was back in time? I believe so. I don't think he was. It was, was. Sly, Jam, Geek. I don't know, whatever. But either way, um, this character's in this book a lot. And then out of the blue, she feels the need to tell us he's black eight pages before the book ends. I'm like, okay. What the? I don't understand why this is in there. But it's like, I'm the token homeboy. By the way, he's black. Like, that's what that fucking yeah, line is. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, we, we, we see his hair color, his physical build, the yeah. clothes he's wearing. Right. What he likes to do, his position in the military, but no one says his fucking race. Is it like somebody was reading the manuscript and was like, how come you need a black guy in here? Yeah, and no. she's like, okay. And that's what's funny. She's yeah. like, I hate being the token homeboy. Yeah. Says the token homeboy because <laughs> there's no black people this entire book until then. Oh, that's, I, which is wonderful. I honestly didn't think he went back in time, but I don't remember him. I'm pretty sure you should check the, uh, right the, the Ruffopedia. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's, there's a, there is a Ruffopedia at the back. I did, yeah. There's a, there's a, um... Oh, well, there's, there's a glossary, there's a glossary where terms. you can, where there's the Navy SEALs thing, and then there's also the Viking terms. Yeah. Well, break the ravens fast, that means to die. Oh, they, they always say, they always say, um, break, um, break the fast means breakfast. Right. They, they feel the need, like, isn't that novel? We have to, we have to use two terms we looked up in, on Wikipedia. Right. Every other page. Because they totally speak like Vikings. It makes perfect sense. Um, but so the book ends where they decide not to go back in time again, and then she's pregnant, and then it picks up an indeterminate amount later where they're getting married, and then there's like a 25-page scene where they're like outside of their wedding talking about how they, they exchange their own vows, their I vow to let you paint me with peach and chocolate body paint whenever I want and stuff. And I'm like, okay, this isn't really furthering the plot, and it's not really necessary. Right. And then it just stops. And then there's a note in the back from, from Sandra Hill asking the readers, what do you want to hear about next? I've Ever since I found out that I had Viking blood in me, you know, like 100 generations ago, I knew that the next 13 of my novels would have to be about Vikings. That's, that's exactly what it says. And I was like, yeah, Jesus there's a lot of them. Christ. Let me see I how many there are. I only so. imagine. So, um, would you read another one of these? You know the the other book that she claims is that was going to be was about Pretty Boy and um, Bermilda, I think was the yeah, that's, the big that's, the that's big Viking the Viking thing. woman in the kitchen yeah the the big one he likes and that because they that was another subplot that just it just they opened it and just stopped well, and they never never went anywhere with it well she didn't come back in time that's well why. but in the next book does age because he's lamenting I'm, the fact for the rest of the book that he lost her back in time now oh which, which brings me up with my, my one big point that I wanted to make about this. Um, so they kill Viking Hitler, right? And then they travel back, they travel forward in time, and they're like, this is great, we did a great thing, awesome, and then they're going about their day. If you went back in time and killed a warlord that was the scourge of an entire country, that would affect history just a bit. Oh, they addressed that in the beginning, they're saying, they found, they found out about that this dude was still alive because they found some random, rare book... Random justification to gloss over? Yeah, well. yeah, because cool. they're saying nobody knows about him. We can't go back and change Hitler, but we can go back and take this guy oh, out. of course. Because nobody knows him. That's true, because none of those 350 women that they rescued after they killed him would ever breed and then have, like, a butterfly effect if people well, no, but that and change be... the course of... Mm. That guy was literally... He had taken over the entire country the way they right. described. I understand. So if they killed him, that would completely upset the political... And and social ram, uh, you know, right. history well, entirely. I'm, I'm amazed just based on what you said here that you know you're talking about that that someone doesn't bring that question up and Sandra Hill doesn't have one of her characters say, well that just didn't happen. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
that's, that's what I'm wondering is if, if they did it in the prologue. Yeah. I guess. I'm looking to see. But it's like it's the, you can't have a time travel book about that. Oh, and they, oh, I love too. Oh, our your blood your blood type. They think you're an alien. He's like, oh, don't worry. That yeah, happened to me and my it's... brothers too. My blood type just changed over time, so yeah. now I'm normal again. Yeah, they talk about that. How do you become a Navy SEAL if you don't have a social security number or a birth certificate or anything? I'm sure like any that damn somebody. I'm sure from the beginning somebody helped them assimilate. But it says here in that prologue, I know that history can't be changed. That a Hitler and the Holocaust can't be erased. But this is history. No one knows of it but us. Maybe this kind of history can be changed. That's her out on that. <laughs> oh, of course. Because of it, was, course. it was some, uh, where'd she find it? Some lost pages of the Old Norse Chronicles. So okay. basically, basically this is a good clue for writers. You get stuck, in a, stuck on a plot point. You just mm-hmm. have a character say... Well, this is how we fix that, and yeah. you just move on. Well, that's yeah. that's the fantasy. Not that's yeah. how fantasy and sci-fi writers go. In yeah. fantasy books, we're like we're trapped our characters in an impossible situation that they can't escape. Well, it's a good thing we have magic, and they just make something up or science fiction. It's a good thing we have technology, which isn't just magic with a goofier name. And then there's like, well, that's right. Didn't you know we could turn invisible and sneak out? Didn't you know that we had like hyperdrive on our ship to go? It's the same fucking thing for time traveling romance erotica. <laughs> It's just, it's sloppy is what it is. Yeah. But well, it's yeah. that history though, but the whole, Hilda and, and Max, this whole thing, it's all their family. And there's other Vikings yeah. in the future too, apparently. Mm-hmm. If they went back in time and killed this guy, that would completely change their family's history. I think, I think he went back after everybody had time traveled forward. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> even joking about this. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Remember, this is like book eight. Okay, so when they try and traveled forward, there was like a bunch of brothers and a bunch of sisters, and the father all were on the line. No, but not the cousins, though. Yeah, but the, the cousins, cousins recognized him. But this was yeah. forward. This is they came back after they left. So that makes it okay. So that doesn't affect history then. What about those three hundred women? Just the women in the sanctuary. Not to mention they came after they were abused. Yeah, but not not to mention all the people that well they would have been killed if history had run its course normally. He said that they, they slaughtered everybody. Right, but some of them had been abused when he was taking over, so they were running from him. Yeah. And then he got them in between his family leaving. He got them after his family left, but before he rampaged across How the whole convenient. country. Well, get some from You're taking this way too seriously. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Listen, I'm going by Back to the Future time travel logic here. And from what I understood, nobody tried, nobody's mom tried to fuck them, which also upset me a lot. Because that's, what I, that's a requirement in my time travel erotica. Because if you look at it, Back to the Future really laid the groundwork for Sandra Hill's entire career. I... <laughs> Think about it. Think they, they were probably doing time travel before there was Back no, to the no. Future. But you know, H.G. Wells didn't have anything about like getting busy with your own family and stuff. Well, I'm you know what? Maybe we need to Google the history of time travel erotica. What if I went back in time already and changed it so I would be right? I've been watching the show. <laughs> I've, been wa- <laughs> I've been watching the show Twelve Monkeys on Sci-Fi, and there's a whole lot of time travel in there. And there's a whole thing about the paradox where you can't you can't be in the same time with yeah. yourself. And I think that's just how she gets That's time it. cop logic, right? Right. If I'm not mistaken. If you'll melt, if you touch each other. Yeah, well, that's which, pretty much which what happens. Which eliminates one of my biggest fantasies. You know, so. But. If only, if only I could go back in time and then seduce my, Sandra Hill style seduce myself in that I would tie myself up and force myself on myself, which would be totally fine. If only, but I can't do that in the Twelve Monkeys world, so I'm not no, gonna. I'm not gonna read anything in that in that world because that's not that's not gonna get my jollies off the way that Sandra Hill can. <laughs> well, I just can't believe how serious he took this. I know. It's... I never read a romance novel like this with that seriousness. Never. Well, clearly we escapism. clearly we enjoy our our time traveling erotica differently. We do. Phoebe. Yes, indeed. Well, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting discussion. Uh, before we move on to the next book, I do want to remind everybody that today's show has been brought to us by the uh, new novel Haunted Gunslinger by Chuck Buddha, and it's currently available on Amazon in paperback and ebook format or free through the Kindle, Amazon Kindle Unlimited program. So thanks again for uh, sponsoring the show today. So, Phoebe, huh? you uh, read what yes. was your book? Family Tradition. <laughs> now, I do want to point out that. Uh, 
This was not the first pick for you. So I've heard... These two nitwits, him and Brian, <laughs> wanted I... you to read the pig. <laughs> I forgot. You and... guys read through quite a few options. Well, Dave's going, no, no. The first thing they said was the pig. And I'm like, absolutely not. I have to live with her. I'm not putting up with her if she reads that. Because... I'm sure no. there's kind of, yeah, no. I'm sure it's bad. No. There's a lot of cunning tangles in it. Actually, yeah. the reason I wanted you to read the pig, the opening line is it was something like, Sandy like picked up the shot like the shot glass full of pig sperm, took a breath and shot it down meat and clean. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Sandy uh, was disgusted, the pig was disgusted. <laughs> that's what it says in there. She was disgusted, I, the pig was disgusted. I think it's something something, something along those something lines. Something like that. Uh, it was I'm that <laughs> or the big head. Which I'm again like, no. Is that the one? I, now I just. I told you the plot of the Big Head. We're we're not going to get say on the show because honestly, if you haven't read the Big Head and you like this sort of thing, you, need to you don't want to know anything about it before you yeah. read it. Yeah. You need to read the Big Head and then track down the short film uh, directed by Michael Ling that I was actually in. That's right, you're in. Yes. I remember. Yes, you're in. Um, and uh, my friend, yeah, I was an extra because Mr. Keen was kind enough to get me a role. Yeah. And then uh, my buddies Scott Schaub and the guys from Testosterosa wrote the theme song that's in the end credits, which right. I helped write the lyrics for. Okay. My so. claim to fame was, uh, he's gonna, he's gonna make your fur pie bleed, uh, bend you right over and split you in half. <laughs> oh. So anyway, this, this, this eventually was the, the one that we picked yeah. for you. Well, I, I, mentioned... well, they picked for you. I, I was just you vetoing, had the vetoing, thing, vetoing things, you, and it was, well, I knew this was terrible too, so. Not, well, it's no not terrible. Well, no it's not, it's just, oh, well, that's debatable. Terrible <laughs> things in here. Anyway, so go ahead. Tell us about your book and what you thought about it. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, why did you pick... Why, why You were going to say something about why, this one. Why did I pick Family Tradition? Um, family Tradition... Edward Lee writes a few distinctly different types of books. There's his mass market stuff, which is a little tamer, and it's a little bit more like thriller, mystery type, uh, and stuff like that. Then there's the small press stuff like Family Tradition that's just super gross out and hilarious. Then there's yeah. the gross out serious stuff, and then there's like... The literary, really philosophical stuff that has some gore in it. Family Tradition is my favorite gross-out book by Edward Lee. It's just, it's completely fun. I mean, it's all it's horrible. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's... And horrible. Horrible stuff going on. Yes. But it's played so cartoonishly over the top that it's never genuinely disturbing. It's just, it's gross, but it's never, it doesn't bother you, like, on a moral level, really. Okay, that's, that's a good way to explain it, because I read, I first have to say, I read this when I was staying with my parents... <laughs> my mom had recently had back surgery and I was home uh, visiting and staying with them to help her with this really crappy back brace that she had to wear for a while. And she loves to read and she knows I'm friends with all these authors and I talk about people and she's seen Fast Zombies Suck. And Did she see my To Catch a Predator episode? No, probably not. <laughs> and she knows like who Brian is. I was telling her about um, Pressure because I read that the same week I was home. I'm like, I have to hide this book because if she picks it up to randomly read it, well, she's going to look at me and say, what is wrong with you? Well, why don't you read the opening line of the book just to give the audience an idea? Because if this is your mom picked this up, this is what she would see. Oh, my God. Boy, are you fucking those worms again? <laughs> Startled by his brother's voice, he saw Turvog. See, he sounds Viking. Guiltily dropped the bait he held in one hand and a fistful of night crawlers he had in the other. Dan, he thought. He'd just been about to go get a nut off when his brother interrupted him. What the fuck? Seriously? <laughs> Seriously. No, what what is the context of this scene, Dan, if you could explain? Why He's jerking worms? off with worms. But wait, he like puts them back in the can and is going to sell them or something. <laughs> and that's the part that's really disgusting, right? The whole thing is disgusting. It's just like... Why? These poor worms. So he puts their their uh, blood worms. Oh, he's gonna get they burst in. Ah. And he doesn't he put it one down his piss hole. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, I think I. <laughs> this is why they wanted me to do this. Okay, so I read the book. I did what I was supposed to do, and I'm reading it, and I, I'm I'm texting with Dave, and while <laughs> while I'm reading it. I had one comment to Lombardo because we weren't supposed to talk about the books at yeah, the time because you wanted honest reactions. Mm. My comment was, as a 20-year veteran of the food service industry... Which is why I picked this book for you as well, actually. Yeah. I had a very strong reaction to this book. That strong reaction being, 
Um, I can't eat feta cheese anymore. <laughs> I marked that part because that was just, oh, for the love of God. Now, what, what happened to that scene? If you could just describe. <laughs> can you just give us, before you do that, can you just give the basic plot of the book? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The plot of the book is there are these Cretans living in the backwoods that, that sell bait that feed the grandfather or whatever the hell he's called. I, I think I mentally blocked some of this. Because the grandfather's a big monster that lives in the lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the guy, the one, the one, which one's the cook? Uh, that was the the one who jerks off of the worms, the oh, cook. He's okay. a very good cook. Not Esau, the other one. Yeah. Big and pale, whatever. I don't know. The, but they're, they're the two worm psychop- fetish yeah. guy. They're both psychopathic rednecks that, that yeah. cook humans. Yeah. But they cook him like he makes, what does he call? He calls he makes like bouillabaisse, but he calls he he makes all this like crazy culinary stuff. Like he keeps some guy in a tank full of his own excrement <laughs> up to his neck, and he force feeds him corn mush to get foie gras out of him. Oh my God! <laughs> Don't forget the vomit cobbler. <laughs> where they force feed a I'm bushel so of apples right to a girl and then make her vomit into pie crust to make vomit cobbler. Well, well, then we have to talk about the poached fish. Oh, that's my, I'll let you handle no, this. No, I don't want to talk about the poached fish. This is my, fish. my favorite scene in that. the whole in the whole story. Okay, we'll come back to the poached fish. We'll come back to the poached fish. Now, the, I, so I, this guy with the worms. What is the deal with the worms? Like, why this is a, a recurring a motif, he likes if you will. The worms. I don't know. They so climb he, down. He masturbates and, to the worms. Yeah, and he lets it grow inside and, of itself and. Bleh. And so this book, as a culinary professional, uh, which oh, I myself am as well, which is why I know, I which is kind of book. funny. We can talk. That's about. one of the reasons that I picked this book. They don't cover um, this in serve safe training. No, they at don't. All. They don't. <laughs> I never. At all. You know, when I'm making vomit cobbler, the rules are very keep it the right temperature. Yeah. And yeah. So you had trouble eating after this. I there's a thing. Let me let me let me talk about. Let me see. I felt bad that I didn't take notes, and honest to God, I wanted to reread it so I could be prepared. And I'm sitting in my car, driving home from work, and I'm like, okay, I'm taking this seriously. You obviously took that really, really seriously (laughs) when you read romance novel. And I'm sitting in the car, and I said, Dave, I can't. I can't do it. It makes me nauseous to this day thinking about having to reread this. But when I was reading it, I told him, I said, it was really bad, but I really wanted to know how it ended. (laughs) Because, you know, there's the, there's the crazy guys in the woods that eat people and cook them in quite grandiose ways. Because <laughs> the other two, and then there's this, there's two assholes, which kind of deserve what they get. Because they're both kind of dickheads. Mm-hmm. And they're women who are with the dickheads for money and stuff. And they go looking for these eels because there's this other snotty cook. Oh, it's not. See, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's this other cook, this other chef, who found these very expensive eels that uh, cracked jaw eel. Yeah, you really know this book. It's my, fa- gonna... my favorite Edward Lee book. Okay, and so now two, I feel these... like I'm not going to do it justice. Well, no, these two assholes, they're they're culinary professionals as well. They're right. like chefs. Right, and idiots. Famous but, chefs. Right, like in the one guy has a TV show. That's how. Please Worm... tell me it's Guy Fieri. Uh, I, it might actually be based on him. I don't know. Yeah. This is a pretty. This is older. Yeah. This is from like two thousand one or two thousand two. But he he idolizes Worm Boy. I can't remember his name. I don't know if it's, I it's not Esau. It's, it's, it's the other one. It's okay. Worm Boy is a great name. Yeah, Worm Boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had we had Viking Hitler Worm yeah, Boy. Yeah, we got Worm this, Boy. This episode is full of nicknames. Yeah. You don't need to find it. Okay. Worm Boy is good well, enough. Worm Boy is the chef of the family, and he cooks for. Grandpa, or whatever the hell he is, in the which you don't find out what he is till the end, but you should know that he's not like Grandpa. <laughs> um, and he idolizes this cook who comes. He gets in this RV and he drag their drunks and they drag their wives out, and the women are just annoyed with them because they're only with them for the money. And then these jackasses are like, "Oh, I know where these eels are. We'll just we'll just play these country hicks for a fool." And they go to this bait shop and they want to buy bait. And the guy's like, oh my God, you're blah, 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 blah. You're the chef guy. Oh my gosh, I watch your show. I make your your food. And he screws up all the names, but he really knows how to make. I mean, it's it's kind of twisted because some of the culinary stuff in here is quite accurate. And I just, it's, does Edward Lee cook? That, yes, he's does a very he? huge, huge seafood okay. nut, like Ed, big time. Ed Lee is a big time 
cool. culinary. He, he could probably, seriously, no joke, he could probably run a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because the, cul- the food references in here are very, like, if you weren't making it with, like, some fat guy's liver, <laughs> I don't remember we wanted the, the foie gras the, for. the fish. The f- oh, the fish. I have to, I, have, I, 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 there was a part that I just thought was ridiculous and funny. It has to do with the fish. Enoch. Enoch, Enoch yeah. is warm okay, boy. Okay, stop worrying about that. Okay. Well, no. Now we're at the thing where we're talking about feta cheese. Okay. <laughs> you okay. complained about this a lot. <gasps> I, I did. I love Greek salad. Yeah. And I can't. I can't, I can't tell eat you. cucumbers. Now I can't eat feta cheese. What I cannot the tell you how many times the last couple months the phrase, I can't eat feta cheese anymore, has come out of her mouth. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do when I'm in the menu planning feta cheese. <laughs> My kids are not having feta cheese. Well, just call, just call Enoch. He can sub for you. Okay. So, this goes back to that guy that were marinating in his bodily fluids. and Another another correlation with rough and ready, oh, the yeah. feces covering yeah. somebody, being very attractive. So, this guy's been in there for like a month. And it's, it, he's caught a cold. <laughs> and he's so excited that he caught a cold. And this is what he says. Damn! Ain't that some look? What's that, Enoch asked. Another cough roughed up. He's done calling himself a cold. My spinach salad. Grandpa Ab loves it. Blo- oh, I can't even say this. <laughs> I am so nauseous right now. This is... This is he is tickled. Lombardo is tickled with this. If, I will this, say, Phoebe. That's all right. Um, the, this book... Made me nauseous. Okay, well then, okay, that good. That is, is one of, like, the three things I've ever read in my life. I had to put it down for a minute. I was like, oh my yeah, god. that happened a couple times. I had and to that's why it. I picked it for you, because I'm a fucking bastard. Uh, but, I made it, <laughs> but I made it through. I know, I'm very proud of you. Blow your nose, you hear me? If you don't, I'll shove your head down that boat so you drown in your own shit, you hear me? Desperately, the head nodded. Esau clamp. Oh... <laughs> Esau clamped his mouth over the boy's nose. I can't. I'm like gagging. He makes him blow his nose in his mouth and he uses it as feta cheese. I can't. I can't read it. That's would, okay. you like, would you like me to read it? Go ahead, Lamardo. It's right there. It's like, oh. this, is, this is not even for dramatic effect. It's for real. Desperately, desperately the head nodded. Esau clamped his mouth over the boy's nose. The boy began blowing. The boy blew his nose heartily into Esau's mouth, long and hard and noisily. At the task's end, Esau pulled his mouth off the victim's nose, cheek stuffed. He spat the lumpy snot in the Tupperware container and sealed it shut. Oh my god! <laughs> Esau smacks his lips, pointed to the boy's wet nose. You want to hit off of this? It's damn good for sure. Nice and meaty. What you gonna do with that bowl of snot, Enoch asked. I done told you, I'm a spinach salad. We ain't got no feta cheese. Snot's way better anyway. Oh yeah, go on, take a hit. Enoch leaned over, covered the boy's nose with his mouth, and which more bronchial mucus was expelled. <laughs> Enoch sucked and swallowed, nodding. You're right, that was damn tasty. Told you, Esau said with a wink. <laughs> and this is, let me just tell you, this is like page 52 of the book, and I'm sitting in my parents' living room in this lovely, you know, retirement community of, you know, genteel old people. My parents are old, they just don't realize it. <laughs> And I'm sitting in there, and I'm and I'm sitting on the couch, and I'm like gagging, and I'm like, oh my god, I, I oh, that was that was. Would you would you say that you read this book one handed, you know? Yeah, the other hand was holding the barf bucket <laughs> <laughs> because oh my god, <laughs> it was awful. So, but you know, he he likes to make bouillabaisse and he foie gras, and I he he's throwing out all these culinary terms. Which I thought was interesting. Well, that's the thing about about Lee's stuff is that he's actually incredibly intelligent. And, I, and I get that. And you can see that that's what I love that's about his stuff so much. That's the difference. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's a good yeah. He is doing this because he thinks it's funny, but he's also very very he can write very literary mm-hmm. literarily, mm-hmm. Uh, and he's very smart. And th- there's a lot of that in there. This is yeah. not stupid no, writing. No, 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 it's no, no, just no. gross. This is, and that's the point that I that I I found was. I've read a lot of romance novels, and some just suck. And um, I wanted to finish this because I wanted to see how it ended, believe it or not. <laughs> it is a heartwarming tale. There's a love story in there, too. Why don't you there tell is. Is that the, the two story? women, right? Yes. 
Well, okay. one of them has a bit of a surprise. Yeah, she has a bonus. <laughs> and I don't know how to politely say this, but okay, so the two jackasses are married to these two hot women who are both using them for their money and they're both sleeping around. Well, I guess the one isn't because the other guy likes her special yes. gift. And so they're left alone because the jackasses are drunk and are going out and trying to, to uh, hoodwink these bumpkins. <laughs> and so the love, they, they, they have a need and they have crazy hot lady sex. <laughs> and so... <laughs> That the other lady actually is, I don't know what the proper term is, in polite company, she has a penis that she seems to have been born with. And I'm not, I just don't want to offend anybody. She had a penis. And the lady was like, the other girl was like, woohoo! And there they go. And no, it's not just any penis. It's, it's rather, yeah. rather, rather yeah. girthy. Yeah, and she was like, this is awesome. So there's a lot of that. Now, he discussed this, the sex scenes in his romance novel. Mm-hmm. But he said they weren't that graphic. Oh, Obviously, this yes. is very different. I'm not going to read you find, any of that. No, no, don't, don't read any of it. Did you, <laughs> Please don't. No, I'm not reading any of it. Well, no. Did you find this erotic in any way, shape, or form? Um, because I have to tell you, okay, this is going to, okay. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say this, this guy kind of rough and ready, got me a little steamy out of the collar a few times. Okay. I'll admit, it's kind of hot. The sex scenes in the book with the women had nothing to do with the gross out stuff. Yeah. So they were sex scenes. So sex is sexy, I assume. I guess. But it's not like they Having were Having never sucking... read or experienced it myself, I wouldn't no. know. But I, I mean, I'm told. That... The, the sex was like the least of my concerns. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It was like normal crazy lady sex. Okay. That you could read in any any romance novel. There was nothing to do with like worms in a penis and snot that tastes like feta or um, fish. We'll get into fish in a minute. Um, it was just two women that were like looking for a little uh uh uh. And they got it because they were married to asshat. So, as the story progresses, they keep he has he keeps finding people. People wander into the swamp and he harvests them, and he always has like lots of things to do, like lots of cooking techniques. He's got a smokehouse and he's got I don't know he's probably got a duck press somewhere too to make you know pressed duck, but you know ugh, uh, yeah. So, these two girls, oh, these two girls want to run away and kill themselves, so they pick the swamp to go out and do this. And <clears throat> one is a larger girl, one is a skinny little girl. They're both kind of nuts. So they go on the boat and they're going to kill themselves, and guess what? They chicken out. Well, then they fall in the water, and then they end up on the island. They're like, oh, help us, help us. Well, nope. They turn into... Um, oh, I think the big girl was going to be barbecue, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she was They pressure smoke. cook her. Oh, God. In a barrel. <laughs> in a barrel. They put her in a barrel and they put her in a hole full of fire. Didn't they? I believe they, they slit her stomach open and filled her with onions or something, didn't they? I mean, well, if you're going to if you're gonna pressure cook meat, I guess that's what you would do. Can't cook it without spices, but... Oh, my God. So she doesn't... Re- she finally realizes, oh, my God, they're going to cook me. And then the snot guy is there, too. Well, snot guy escapes at some point. Yep. And so the other little friend, the young lady, she is, what, what do they call it in this book? Um, the, her flux? The, the monthly flux. Her monthly flux. She was on her monthly flux. Well, let me just tell you, Enoch was like, woohoo! So 
he said, well, I wish I could find the fish thing. Okay, so he decides to make... There is a, there's a picture of a staple gun being held. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's right around there. I know the, the illustrations in this in the limited edition uh, aren't accurate to the page count. But so they're, they're like right a around page, the same Yeah, they're time. within the same there three is, pages. There it is, there it is. Okay. So it should be somewhere... Oh, I think she said... There. I think they actually used the word flux in here. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I wonder if, if Edward Lee is actually a pen name for Sandra Hill. That would be hilarious. <laughs> or Sandra Hill's a pen name for Edward Lee. Oh, my God. Lee. Well, if you listen to the Ed Lee interview that we did last That's true. And I just listened to that recently. Yeah, he actually he did. said yeah. he wrote a couple romance novels like, a long time ago. Yeah, but he wouldn't that he say. he never published. But I maybe, want... maybe there's a secret there. I wonder if he ah. is rough and ready. <laughs> okay, so here, here they just finished making the, the vomit pie. He makes the skinny girl eat like a bushel of apples and then she pukes up into... What well, seems to be short crust, you know, made with mm-hmm. butter and lard and mm-hmm. flour Very and tasty. stuff, yeah. You know, like you'd make a tart. So she fills that up, and then, and then, uh, then uh, one of them noticed, hey, what's all that blood running down her skinny legs? Because they, and Enoch took a look, and sure enough, streaks of blood were running down the insides of Mavis's thighs. Weren't me, Enoch attested. Esau cracked his hands together loud as a stropping belt. Hot damn! Is this damn perfect or what? The string bean bitch is having her period. Enoch scratched his head. Why is that perfect? Esau's eyes beamed. He jogged to another bucket, withdrew a still flopping pound and a half lake trout. It's Grandpa Ab's favorite thing in the world. <sighs> I just want to point out that there are already two things are, are his favorite thing in the world. Grandpa apparently changed his mind a lot. Grandpa, he's a... He's yeah. a man of many tastes. Many tastes, apparently, yeah. Uh, pussy poached fish. <laughs> Hold her down, brother, and spread her legs. I wish this was on video. Oh, my God. So, yeah. I've been waiting five months to hear you say that. <laughs> sick, twisted enjoyment. Okay, so they do that, and then they staple her shut. So, so the fish can marinate. Yes, for like two weeks or something. It's crazy. Oh! Oh my, oh my god, god, my jaw hurts from smiling. <laughs> okay, so, um... Yeah, oh, that's when they go in and cut her abdomen and they uh, pull out her intestines. While she's still alive. Oh, they're going to make haggis from it. Oh, they're going to make haggis. Okay. Yeah, shit sausage, another one of Grandpa Ab's favorites. <laughs> I don't think you're a particularly discerning palate. This is grandpa <laughs> the thing that is ridiculous. Okay, there's so much that's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. The thing that's really ridiculous <laughs> is the culinary finesse of Enoch. Right? No, right. Esau. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, and this is where they put her in the pressure cook, the bitch. So then, I don't, I'm so, anyway, so the fish, the fish girl is obsessed with Mulder from, yep. from the X-Files. <laughs> that's what I Which is like, that's like randomly weird that made, that's kind of funny. So in the, in, at, at one point she escapes and is running through the woods. And so is the is the big bald poop man with the foie gras liver, and the police are like, "Did you just see that?" Nope, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> so she's running through the woods screaming, "Save me, Mulder! Save me, Mulder! Is that you?" I'm like, "Oh my god!" That made me giggle. I'm like, "What?" The? I mean, it's not bad enough. You've got a fish in your hoo ha. <laughs> You're running around looking for an imaginary character. Wait, wait, wait! wait. We gotta back up here a second. No, no. no. It's not hoo-ha, remember? We learned the proper term on Family Feud. Cooch! Yes, there you go. <laughs> also known as uh, fur pie, split tail. Oh, my God. <laughs> it really is a variety this is of things. It's horrible. Now, if I'm not mistaken, she screams, help me, Mulder, and then when it comes across another person, yeah. she screams, there's a fish in my pussy. Yeah, and he thinks we're good, and then he's at the <laughs> mental institution. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So pretty much everybody does. Oh, yeah, because she's telling... Yep, here's the end. This is like the end. She escapes. I think she's the only one that survives, isn't I think, she? I think so. It's been, it's, like I said, it's been quite a while. Because everybody it. pretty much dies. The women get killed. Because the women are trying to save people, and then they're like, nope, we're going to kill you too. But this is what she comes out of the woods. Fox, thank God you found me. 
Mertz just stared. There's a fish in my pussy. Fox, get it out. <laughs> She's. She, Mertz stared at. Stared all the more. She looked nearly breathless standing there. She smelled bad. Then put my friend Bess. They put my friend Bess in a large drum and cooked her. Fox. They stuffed vegetables in her stomach and made me eat through fruit and throw up. Great, Mertz thought. Crazy, and it was just his luck. He was off at four and headed to his best friend's bachelor party. Tonight they were going to have strippers who did a bit more than strip. <laughs> Great, I'm going to miss out on all the good stuff. Let me get you to the hospital, miss. And he as grudgingly got out of the car and put the stinky naked girl in the back. Don't take me back to the Jagger Hoover building, Fox. That smoking man will be waiting in the Washington <laughs> field office. Forget it. I just think that's hysterical. That's just it. You were my hero, Fox. You saved me. And he shoots her in the head. <laughs> Forgot about that. She doesn't survive. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, she's crazy. I'm just going to shoot her. Yep. <laughs> Who's going to miss one dead crazy? And that's the end of the book? That's the end of the book. Okay. <laughs> and there's a whole lot of gross in between. Yeah, well. We do but, kind of so what are, your, what are your overall thoughts of, of this book? Okay. I don't understand how people think of this stuff. I don't understand why people read. I don't understand the whole gross out thing because it's it's really gross. <laughs> and you know what? And I point. don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if it's more gross. And I and I can see why you picked this one for me because of the food service stuff. Because I think <laughs> that hit me particularly hard. I wanted to. I wanted you to to relate to these characters. Oh my god! I'm not sure what what type of people you normally cook. It's your job, but we don't. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to admit, I was working on fall menu planning. <laughs> now, did um, this book influence that at all? Not at all. Well, no feta. <laughs> no feta. Um, I liked. I liked some of the characters. I. I did not. I. I think the 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 worm boy. I think worm boy. How do I say this? I think he he. In a twisted way, I think he just wanted to please Grandpa Ab, and he was taking care of him. Mm-hmm. Which is lovely, <laughs> except you shouldn't really cook people to do that. But what if? But that's his. That's what Grandpa Ab eats, though. I mean, well, he's a monster. So yeah, oh, Grandpa Ab's is monster, by the way. But here's the thing: are is he a monster because we're normal people and we're judging him as such? Or are we the monsters because exactly? We're what about you know? From their point of view, we are food. Just food, you know? Aren't hey, we monsters it's a, to it's a, a fish? Cookbook yeah. to, to serve man. Aren't we? Aren't we monsters to a trout? Say. Yeah, okay, I can see that. Um, I, I mean, I think he was he was just trying to do his best in the best way he knew how. I'm not defending him. I'm not defending this book. Well, <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I am. I don't know. East, <laughs> Worm Boy just wanted to cook good culinary treats for his big giant monster grandpa. We and he wanted to make back. him happy. Um, <clears throat> it just so happens you have to, like, Slit a woman open, stuff her with vegetables, and pressure cook her in an oil drum for three days or however long. I don't know how long it takes. I don't know what the proper internal temperature is for that. Is it red meat? Is it white meat? Is it chicken? Four hundred and twenty-five degrees. No, about, internal after they're know, cooked. You know, from, but yeah, you want you want about ten minutes a pound. Um, the thing is, a lot of the fat melts off, and it just, well, it I would melts. think it would need to be at least one sixty-five or over. Probably. Yeah. Probably. So okay, so. As much as I hated the gore and I and the the visceral reaction it caused the glee on Michael's face is amazing. He's just <laughs> he's tickled pink. And I I I wanted to see how it ended. And I felt bad for the women. I really felt they finally found happiness with each other and then they die in a horrible way. I'm, I I don't recall. I think I blocked part of the book. <laughs> Honest to god. Um but it, when I call it a, it was very well written. Um, I don't really want to read another one of his books. So no more, no more leave for you. No, and then you say he writes other things. I, there's other, like there are other books. I picked. I will admit. Yeah. I tried to pick the most revolting thing I could find. Oh, you were. That's, that's why family tradition is probably the grossest of all of them. Oh. He does write books that are not nearly as graphic. They're always violent, but they're not pornographically violent. Yeah. But he and is a really good writer. Like he writes some very legitimate, serious stuff. Right. Um, but this is like his fun stuff. 
I mean, and I think the fact that it was so over the top and so cartoonish and to, you know, obviously Adult Swim cartoonish, I guess, um, made it more palatable. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You like that? I do like that. I love that. (laughs) So, um, I won't read, no. I don't, I mean, I don't recommend it unless you really like gross out stuff, and that's great if you do. I don't know that I would recommend Rough and Ready either, um, because that would not have been a book I would have chosen for you. Um, there's other writers that are definitely better. Yeah, now, the thing with Rough and Ready... That, have you had a history? What bothered me about this, though, on that same tangent, is this wasn't over-the-top and cartoony at all. With this premise, I expected this to be... To floor me with how outrageous it was. Then you needed different... And it wasn't. Yeah. And that really actually kind of bugged me. I'm like... it's serious. Yeah, there was... I mean, there was points in it. That, and it's okay if they played it straight. That's good. It's better than it being silly. But they just really didn't play up the stuff. It really just felt like a completely generic mm-hmm. romance thing with varying degrees of consent. And then they just had happened to have time travel in it, which was kind of a bummer. Because they just felt like it could have been a lot more unique, given the premise. I think... I think there's other authors that do, a, I don't want to say a better job, just do a different job. And then different, different, different subject matter. There's time travel. <coughs> like, there's stuff that I would have picked. I probably would have picked maybe. Chuck Tingle. Who's Chuck Tingle? <laughs> I don't know who that is. I don't want to know. Rough, I, I learned rough, enough. Rough and Ready lack the subtlety of Space Raptor Butt Invasion or um, Good Lord. Pounded in the Butt by My Own Book, Pounded in the Butt by My Own Book. I'm <laughs> um, not pounding anything in anybody's butt. <laughs> um, but, like, I like um, Sherilyn Kenyon. She writes, like, demons and um, gods. That those, that, that those are, I like those. Those are romance novels? Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's paranormal romance. Oh. Um. And okay, okay. Sherilyn Kenyon, um, oh, the Faye series, Karen Marie Moaning, she writes some good stuff, too. Um, I like hers. She, it's, again, that's fairies, the Faye, and the good Faye, and the bad Faye, and you might like those, but there's not, there's, those books are not, I don't think you read them for the sex. Yeah. There's other people, like. If you want to read just for the sex, uh, Maya Banks. Um, I'm trying to think. This makes me sound like a total pervert, doesn't it? I, um, <laughs> different strokes for different folks, Dana. Um, you know, there's women that it's more about the erotic experience than the, yeah. I want to say, story in quotes. Yeah. And then there's some that write, you know, like Karen Marie Moaning. She's, she's got this huge series, huge following. I've read just about all of the books. And they're... It's you're reading for the whole story, not because Barons is like. Mm. Um, I'm sorry, Barons is what? If you could. Repeat. Oh, he's just like. Uh, now, what, a god. now this guy, this god, does he get up to the? Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> As you and were you want to hear about discussing about, before before the show. And you want to hear about his? <laughs> yeah, that, so that was what what Phoebe was telling us before the show that family tradition had a lot of. <laughs> 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 the women did. The women did, and they enjoyed it, and I'm glad they had. I'm glad for them that they had that those moments of passion, and togetherness, and satisfaction before they died. Well, that's good. In family tradition, you mean? In family tradition, that's good. yes. Well, and on that tangent, um, all about satisfaction and everything, mm-hmm. um, I have something for you. Oh. I wanted to, uh, you know, because from one culinary <laughs> expert to another, um, oh. I have something for you to eat. Oh, um, I don't want to eat some feta cheese. I just felt that this would be appropriate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have some sour worms here for you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, you haven't been doing anything with these worms, have you? Not yet. Okay, I'm going to get them all clean. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did put them back in the container afterwards. Just um, like in the book. Yeah. <laughs> None of these went to my urethra, though, unfortunately. Uh, okay, well, I, I think that pretty much sums up both of the books there. Um, <laughs> depending on audience reaction, we may do this again. <laughs> I would love to do a cross-genre book club thing. Like, uh-huh. that would be, I had a lot of fun reading this book because I would never have read it otherwise. Right. I think I think it would be interesting. I, if I people would suggest books well, for us to read. That would be great. I personally would like next time for Phoebe to read something a little more serious. Mm-hmm. And my pick would be off season. 
by Jack Ketchum. I love Off Season. It, off Season is an amazing book, um, and I don't know if you enjoy it or not, but you're not going to read The Girl Next Door because you need to go to therapy after that. Um, mm-hmm. I heard it was a really good book, though. It's a great book. But that, didn't they make a movie on that? Yes, it's an amazing book, um, yeah. but it leaves a stain. Yeah, mm-hmm. like seriously, I've I'm only stained enough things. I've, I've only read it once. It. I'll never read it again, and not because it was a bad book, because of the book goes on in the book. It's just way too intense for me. I, I think you told me that. Yeah. So, um, so uh, real quick here, uh, I, I, I guess Phoebe, you don't really have anything to plug, do you, or anything? Well, no, we do have something to plug. Oh, what's that? Bombardo's new movie. Well, I meant for you. For first. I don't, don't, uh, yeah. don't eat feta. I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the Feta Cheese Council of America probably is not going to sponsor this episode. No. So, uh, yes, uh, Mike, a quick update for the listeners on White Doomsday. Um, yeah, I'm doing White Doomsday. It's our first feature-length movie from Real Splatter. Um, Miracle on 34th Street meets the road. Uh, despite what this episode may have you think, it's actually completely dead serious. No mm-hmm. jokes at all. Um, very, very bleak, post-apocalyptic, uh, Christmas goodness. Um, trailer premiered at Scares That Care. If you guys listened to the previous episode, you guys talk about that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we're in post-production. We're working on visual effects and sound right now. And, uh, hopefully that will all be wrapped up and finished in time for Christmas. And we're going to be hitting the film festival circuit. Um, so if you are a wealthy distributor who's looking for a movie to buy for lots of money, please contact myself or the executive producer, Brian Keane. We would love to talk to you. And I'm really excited for you guys to see it. It's, uh, it's a big departure for me. I'm used to doing comedy, so this is one of the first times I'm really bearing my soul, so to speak. It's a very personal story, and I think you guys are going to be surprised, and I hope you like it. The trailer looks amazing. Thank you. Yeah, the trailer's available at realsplatter.com or on YouTube. I'm Dreaming of a White Doomsday. Just Google it. It'll come up a bajillion times from all the different websites that are posting it right now. Okay. Did we mention that we're coming to them from the, the Real Splatter studio? Well, we are. Yes, we, we are not at Brian's house today. We are at the... Real splatter. HQ. HQ. Yeah. We're yeah. in the living room, which is the yeah. sin den, which the walls are literally covered in blood. Yes. Yeah, literally. And yeah. then the living room has, I mean, the dining room, this is so very, Edward Lee has body parts all over the dining room. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of rotten cadavers sitting in the front window. Yep. That's how you know you're at the right house. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and that's not even a joke. That that's not a joke is, at all. Actually, is happening right now. Okay. Well, one more time before we go. Uh, today's episode was brought to you by the new novel. Haunted Gunslinger by Chuck Buddha. Uh, James Johnson, illegitimate son of the legendary Wyatt Earp, moves to Wichita, Kansas for a fresh start. He brings his mother and his mentally disabled friend Carson with him, but fresh starts bring new problems. Each year, on the same date, a gunslinger ghost shoots up Main Street at high noon. The apparition replays its last moments alive. The townsfolk believe the legendary spirit to be a residual haunt, and until he gets the gunslinger finds a way to finally win a shootout. Can James and Carson de- defeat the haunted gunslinger before more innocents die? Or will the devil win the West? Haunted Gunslinger is the second installment in the Son of Earp series. The supernatural horror continues. Haunted Gunslinger is available right now in paperback and ebook format. Exclusively from Amazon and is available free through their Amazon Kindle Unlimited program. So there you go. Thanks again for sponsoring the show today. Um, remember, the horror show is available. You can listen to it on iTunes, Roku, Stitcher, any other platform. And, of course, it's on projectiradio.com. If you have a suggestion for the show, a comment, something you want us to talk about, feel free to get some with us on Twitter. Don't judge me. <laughs> like our Facebook page. We're getting closer and closer to the goal of 1,000 likes. So please, if you've not done that before, like our Facebook page. If you want to advertise on the show, please send an email to Brian Keen at the horror show dot com, uh, with Brian Keen dot com, and uh, I'll get back to you with the ad rates. Remember, ad rates are going to go up in September, but if you buy ads now through now through the rest of the year, they're going to be at the old rate. So uh, if you're thinking of spending some money now, is the time to do so. And um, that's it. Uh, this show. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And like I said, if you have any book suggestions for them. <laughs> to do a book club again. I, Love to do it, guys. Yeah. Come on with something goofy. And, uh, yeah. I, I hope you people enjoyed this. And uh, uh, that's all for me. You guys have anything else? No, I'm still not. Uh, I, um, I would like to say, in, in the end of it, I actually did really enjoy reading Rough and Ready. Yeah. Um, it was very different than what I thought, and it was good to get outside of the genre and read something completely different. But I do feel like it's important for us to plug the books themselves. Yeah. Family Station by Edward Lee and John 
Peelin uh, is available from Shadowlands Press. Um, I think they did a paperback of this. I think Necro did. Yeah, no, I think so. I think yes. you can get that on Amazon. Uh, the paperback's probably. I don't know if this this is a limited edition hardback. It's probably not available anymore. But the paperback is available um, for like probably fifteen twenty bucks. I really recommend it if you like Gross Out and Edward Lee. It's a lot of fun. Um, it is a lot. I mean, it is. It's it's yeah. a lot of fun. I don't know what. And um, Mike's choice was Sandra Hill's Rough and Ready. Um, and it's a whole series of Viking time travel books, and I'm sure you can get that on Amazon. And you don't necessarily have to start with the first one. And yeah, because you said this was like number eight. And yeah, I didn't even. I mean, they make vague reference yeah. to yeah. the other ones, but right I didn't into know. It. Yeah, but it stood alone. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was a standalone, yeah. standalone novel. But and apparently, they're all right. very funny. They, well, I didn't think it was particularly funny, but right. she's known for her humor, and that's. Yeah. Apparently, I guess her shtick is that it's, yeah. it's got. And some it's not always about Vikings too. She's got all kinds of things. I, I was just looking online. She's got a bunch of new books um, about vampires and things. So okay, and that's available. What, well, it, what press is that? Is this Penguin? I think. Berkeley Sensation Time Travel Romance. Is that the right thing? I think I saw Penguin on there. Penguin Publishing, maybe. Okay. I don't know if those are these are in print, right? Oh yes. You can still oh get yeah, these yeah, in, like, yeah. Kindle www. Stuff, Penguin. Dot com. I guess, I guess you can get that in Kindle. I know you can get Family Tradition. Oh, you can, Kindle, I got it on Kindle. I yeah. downloaded it for seven. So you can also get the stuff digitally if you guys do that. But So I mean, I really do say, guys, if you really enjoyed this episode, read yeah. one or both of these books and then see if we're right. Let us know if you yeah. agree or disagree. I'd love to hear the, uh, the I'd love to discuss this stuff further with, uh, with you guys. It'd be a lot of fun. I think so. Okay. That's it. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey, folks, this is Brian. Um, yes, we know the show is over, so why am I still talking to you? Well, for the four of you who are still listening, uh, we wanted to remind you once again about Project iRadio's patron campaign. That's www.patreon.com slash Project iRadio. Go there, and you can support the network and support this show and all the other great shows uh, that Project iRadio brings you every week. Once again, that's patron.com slash Project iRadio.